This is a hollow metal can with a rubber stopper. And we fill that can with dry ice, that is, solid carbon dioxide. Now, you know solid carbon dioxide is very cold. This white stuff is just frost that's gathered on the outside of the can. Now, as the can absorbs heat from the room, the carbon dioxide evaporates and turns into a gas. The gas takes up more room than the solid, so it has to go somewhere. It can't come out the top, so it comes out a little hole here in the bottom of the disk. Now, you can't see it coming out the hole, but if I make a flame, I think you can see that there's gas coming out and blowing the flame. Now, if we put the disk with its stream of gas coming out the bottom down on our table top, which is made of a very smooth piece of plate glass, we can wait a moment while the gas coming out builds up pressure underneath, which it has to do in order to escape. By now, the disk is floating on this film of escaping gas. That film is so thin that I'm sure you can't see it from out there. I can scarcely see the thick, see a space between the disc and the glass myself. But if you'll come and look over my shoulder, I think I can show you that there is a space. By slipping underneath the disc, this piece of tin foil, I took off a chewing gum wrapper. Now we'll slip the tin foil between the disc and the plate glass top of the table, showing that there is indeed a space, a thin film of gas, between the disc and the, the glass upon which it's resting. The purpose of this is simply to reduce the friction to a point where we won't have to worry about it or measure it in our experiments today. It's fun to play with this thing. Let me show you. I'll give it a little push, just a little one. And there it goes, moving sedately. No sign of slowing up. Come on back. Same thing the other direction. It takes only a very tiny force to start it in motion. Let me show you that.